I want to acknowledge that many people enjoy alcohol in moderation or even light drinking, the occasional drink or the occasional two drinks, or maybe even on average one drink per night, so seven drinks per week. I'm certainly not here to tell you what to do and what not to do. I do find it immensely interesting, however, that first of all, alcohol is a known toxin to the cells of the body. Some of you might immediately say, well, wait, what about hormesis? What about this phenomenon where if we regularly ingest a toxin, it makes us stronger? In other words, what doesn't kill us makes us stronger. Now, there's you know some reason to believe that might be beneficial in terms of some forms of cellular resilience. Maybe, maybe, no, sorry. It doesn't work that way. There are processes of hormesis in which, for instance, exposing yourself safely to increases in adrenaline through you know, ice baths or other things that increase adrenaline can raise your so-called stress threshold. But here we're talking about cellular stress and damage to cells. So my read of the literature, and again, this is my read, and I invite others to you know provide studies, or I would prefer actually collections of studies that point in the direction, if they exist, that alcohol can be beneficial. But my read of the literature, or I should say, my understanding of what I would call the center of mass of the literature on alcohol is that no consumption, zero consumption, consumption of zero ounces of alcohol is going to be better for your health than low to moderate consumption of alcohol. And that low to moderate consumption of alcohol is going to be better for you, of course, than moderately high to high alcohol consumption on the order of 12 to 24 or more drinks per week. I realize that for most people listening to this, it's probably low to moderate alcohol consumption that is part of their standard repertoire. And I'm not here to give you justification for doing that, nor am I going to tell you not to do that. I would like you to consider perhaps, however, the negative effects that we understand and that are documented. For instance, the negative effects of alcohol in the gut microbiome and the things that you can do to better support your gut microbiome. The negative effects on the stress system, that HPA axis that we talked about earlier, and the fact that even low to moderate levels of alcohol consumption can increase our levels of stress when we're not drinking. And to think about acquiring some tools and you know getting some proficiency with tools, behavioral or otherwise, that can help you with stress modulation that don't involve alcohol consumption. So again, the point here is to illustrate where the problems lie with alcohol consumption, but also what I've tried to do is to point you to some resources that can help offset some of those negative effects. Will they offset all the effects? I can't say that for sure, but certainly taking measures to offset some of the negative effects of any alcohol consumption that you might be having or doing is going to be beneficial to you. And those tools and protocols are going to be health promoting in any case.